eruption. Volcanoes and the Science of Saving Lives by Elizabeth Roosh. Photographs by Tom Ullman. So remember, whenever we look at a new text, we should look at the cover, the name, the drawings, um, and debate what the story is going to be about. Um, this one was pretty simple because they gave it to us in the name where they said volcanoes. Uh, we also know may know that an eruption uh, is a giant explosion, uh, such as what happens when a volcano explodes, it has an eruption. When the Colombian volcano, Nevada del Ruiz, erupted in 1985, United States Geological Survey, USGS scientist Andy Lockhart was horrified by the tragedy. A year later, he became one of the earliest members of a volcano crisis team called the Volcano Disaster Assistance Program, VDAP. The VDAP's mission is to bring equipment and knowledge to areas threatened by volcanoes in order to predict eruptions and prevent catastrophes. Six years after the program started, Chris Newhall, another VDAP scientist, got a call about steam shooting from Mount Pinatubo, a mountain in the Philippines. Until this happened, most people thought Mount Pinatubo was a huge jungle-covered mountain, not a volcano. Chris knew it was serious. He and the team had to do something. He and fellow VDAP scientists Andy Lockhart and Rick Hoblet set out to try to predict Mount Pinatubo's next move. They worked from Clark Air Base, very close to the volcano. On May 28th, Chris got a new gas reading from Mount Pinatubo. Sulfur dioxide, SO2, had jumped tenfold to 5,000 tons a day. The volcano was definitely ramping up. <clears throat> A few days later, instruments recorded two unusual earthquakes, a shallow, continuous rhythmic shaking known as a low frequency earthquake meant magma was moving toward the surface and releasing more gas. Then the seismographs recorded the first earthquake directly under the vent. Over the next few weeks, the volcano spat steam higher and higher into the sky. The plume changed color from white to gray. Then the volcano began shooting rock and ash. But the geologists tested the ash and found no sign of fresh lava. The steam explosions were just tossing up old material. Would the volcano erupt or would it just spit steam until it slipped back into dormancy? 1. Dormancy the period during which a volcano is temporarily inactive. Seismographs. Seismographs are instruments that measure and record details about earthquakes, such as their strength and how long they last. Then the sulfur dioxide plummeted from 5,000 tons to 1,300 to 260 a day. That could mean the volcano was settling down or it could mean the volcano's vent was clogged with pressure building. Andy and the other scientists watched the seismograph around the clock. They saw bigger quakes, longer quakes, and a harmonic tremor, a constant humming earthquake that often means magma is rising and boiling away groundwater. The Americans and Filipinos each had their own alert level systems. The VDAP scientists debated was a time to raise the alert level to three. High and increasing unrest, eruption possible in two weeks. Ray, the head of the Filipino geologists, would need time to spread any warning to people scattered in villages all around Pinatubo. He raised his alert level to three, eruption possible in two weeks. About 10,000 members of the Ida tribes were moved to evacuation camps. The quakes accelerated. Magma moving all along the conduit was shaking the ground deep in the earth and quite near the surface. More and more steam and ash poured from cracks in the volcano, called fumaroles. The volcanologists estimated the size of the magma chamber, the reservoir of melted rock and gas under the volcano, and the potential size of the eruption. The eruption 
could be 10 times larger than the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens, which was bigger than any living geologist had ever seen. Military officers listened intently to the geologists' briefings. At the end of one, Major General William Studer asked, what would you do? The scientists answered, move the dependents off the base. The officers relocated pregnant women and the elderly. The Air Force newspaper and TV station began broadcasting details of an evacuation plan, what to bring and where to go. Two, groundwater. Water found underground in the cracks in sand, soil, and rock. Three, Ida tribes. Tribes of people native to the island of Luzon in the Philippines. Four, conduit. A channel for moving some type of liquid. Five, volcanologists. Geologists who study active and inactive volcanoes. Evacuation. An evacuation is the act of moving from a dangerous area to a safer one. Reservoir. A reservoir is a place where a supply of something is collected. <clears throat> the earthquakes got even closer to the surface. A steam plume reached 28,000 feet, 8,500 meters, the highest so far. After conferring with VDAP scientists, Ray raised his alert to level four, enlarging the evacuation zone for the local population. Filipinos all around the volcano packed a few possessions and walked or rode carts down the mountain. VDAP members debated, should we move to level four? The Air Force had set VDAP's level four as a trigger for Clark to be evacuated. Evacuating 14,000 people and millions of dollars of equipment would be a huge challenge and a huge burden to the military and their families. Some VDAP members thought they should. Then the earthquakes diminished. Volcanoes don't necessarily move from deep sleep to violent eruption in a straight orderly progression, Andy said. They ramp up and drop down, ramp up and drop down. The trend at Pinatubo was ramping higher and dropping down less. Any single episode of ramping up could lead to a full-blown eruption, but it could all just peter out to nothing. The scientists had to predict the unpredictable. The consequences, a costly false evacuation or tragic loss of life, weighed heavily on their minds and their hearts. On June 8, a chopper lifted off to give scientists a closer view of the summit. The sky cleared. They could see that a big, ugly gray blob of rock had poked out of the east crater wall. It was a lava dome. Cold, hard, heavy rock could be clogging the vent. With magma moving up with nowhere to go and pressure building, this thing could blow with deadly results. <clears throat> The scientists told the Air Force commanders the new development and waited for them to take action. Then, the next morning, June 9th, when Andy and his colleague hopped into the helicopter, it took a detour to the center of the base. General Studer and his second-in-command climbed aboard. The helicopter headed for the volcano. Instead of billowing steam and ash, only a thin snake of yellow-gray plume drifted up from the summit. Geez, that's a lot of ash, the general commented. Conferring. If you are conferring with someone, you are discussing an idea or trying to make a decision. Consequences. Consequences are the outcomes or effects of events. That's nothing, the volcanologist said. They pointed out how underlying the jungle all around the mountain were signs of massive ancient pyroclastic flows. That's all ash from the last eruption. The helicopter turned and the widespread devastation once wrought by this volcano became impossible to miss. The general stared silently out the window as the helicopter headed back to the base. Finally, he turned to his second in command. Do it tomorrow, he said. 
6. Pyroclastic flows. Fast-moving flows of hot gas and rock. Widespread. If something is widespread, it happens over a large area or among many people. Volcanoes don't necessarily move from deep sleep to violent eruption in a straight, orderly progression. Mount Pinatubo steams behind an Air Force helicopter. Looking for lumps. Changes in the surface of a volcano give clues about what is happening beneath. Imagine a mole tunneling under a lawn. When the mole moves, the grass bumps up. Magma moving underground does the same thing, actually lifting the ground above it. When magma is close to the surface, the bulge can grow hundreds of feet high and hundreds of feet wide. Lava shoved out of an erupting volcano can also make a massive bulge or dome. Domes and bulges might plug a vent, causing pressure to build underground. Domes can also grow so large that they trigger landslides. So scientists have to track their growth too. How do scientists measure all these lumps and bulges? Digital elevation maps compiled using photos and radar data show the length, width, and height of every part of the volcano. Scientists compare DEMs compiled at different times to track how the shape of the volcano has changed. They can also make these measurements using satellite radar images, GPS, meters that track how the ground tilts, or by careful surveying. June 10th, 1991. At 6 a.m., military television and radio echoed with the order to evacuate. The streets of Clark Air Base filled with cars, trucks, and buses that funneled downhill through the shanty towns and toward a naval station an hour away. By noon, 14,500 people had evacuated. The Filipinos extended their evacuation to 12 miles, 20 kilometers, displacing 25,000 people. People with carts piled high with furniture and leading water buffalo shared the road with the long line of military trucks and the cars of people evacuating the base. Left on the base were some officers, the military police, MPs, and engineers who could keep the lights on. The volcanologists moved their observatory to the farthest corner of the base. We were just incredibly relieved that most everybody was out of the way, Andy said. But the pressure still weighed on the scientists. I couldn't help second-guessing myself, said team member Dave Harlow. All of us did. I was feeling as though the chances were pretty high that we would all be hauled in front of committees investigating the disastrous evacuation, its costs and impact to the Philippine economy and on the Air Force. 7. Shanty Towns Settlements on the outside of towns that consist of large numbers of rundown dwellings, people evacuating to avoid the dangers of the eruption. We were just incredibly relieved that most everybody was out of the way. Would Mount Pinatubo really explode? The next few days would tell. Andy woke up to a blue sky morning on June 12. It was after 6 a.m. and the clouds had usually rolled in by then. But the sun shone brightly as he waited for geologist Rick Hoblet, who was going to give Andy a lift to the observatory. Let's go. Rick hollered from upstairs. Jeez, Andy thought, what's up with him? Rick raced down the stairs, taking two at a time, just as Andy opened the front door. A huge black ash column pumped out of the volcano, filling the sky. The column rose up higher and higher. Rick and Andy jumped into their truck and raced off. By the time they got to the observatory at the edge of the base, the ash column had hit the stratosphere. The cloud mushroomed out, reaching the sky right above them. Then the cloud slowed, stopped, and started to dissipate. 
Wahoo! Whoa, cool! The MPs hollered. They started doing a victory dance because they thought they'd just seen the eruption and survived. But Andy and Rick didn't dance. They turned to their instruments. They knew that this could be just the beginning. For the next few days, Pinatubo shot steam, rumbled, and kept the scientists on edge. Several times, the volcano shot up columns as big as the one on June 12th. But on June 14th, the volcano stopped shooting steam and ash. Pinatubo shook as much as it had two days before, but nothing came out. The volcano is all stopped up, Andy thought. He fell asleep late that night, restless and worried. Then, on June 15th, Andy and other scientists were jolted from sleep by a cry. Get up! Get up! yelled the scientist on watch. Andy ran to the front door. Clouds obscured the top of the volcano, and pelting rain blurred Andy's view. But great black ash clouds, massive rolling clouds of superheated ash, raged down six miles, ten kilometers, on each side of the volcano. Pyroclastic flows. Moments later, rain and wind from a typhoon that had hit the island completely hid the erupting volcano. Andy rushed to the seismograph. The earthquakes died down, way down, and stayed down. Eight, typhoon. A dangerous, powerful tropical storm occurring in the Western Pacific or Indian Oceans. Military personnel and their families evacuate Clark Air Base. This is bad, Andy muttered. The pressure under the volcano was building. Should we evacuate? The scientists asked each other. The decision was quick. Someone yelled, evacuate the base. Everyone started moving all at once, grabbing things, yelling. Officers, MPs, and scientists piled into cars and sped away. From a big field, they watched the dark volcano. They waited. The volcanologists wanted to see their instruments. They wanted to find out what this volcano was up to, so they could extend the evacuation zone if needed, or learn something that would help at another crisis. But that would mean risking their own lives. They decided they'd been too hasty evacuating themselves. They drove back to the observatory on the base, along with the base commanders. It was raining, not just water and ash, but egg-sized chunks of pumice. The scientists hurried into the building and crowded around the seismographs. The earthquakes were so intense that the seismograph needles just banged from the top to the bottom of the drum. Tunk, 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 making alarming blocks of solid ink. Pinatubo blasted ash higher and higher. The scientists watched, aghast. As monitoring stations blinked out one by one on the far side of the volcano, destroyed. Then a station went down on their side. Nine, pumice, light, glassy lava. Alarming. Something that is alarming makes you worry that something bad may happen. Threatened by Mount Pinatubo, Clark Air Base was evacuated on June 10th. The light-colored peak in the center is the summit of Pinatubo. The June 12, 1991 eruption of Mount Pinatubo, viewed from Clark Air Base. I had maybe 20 seconds to run to the back of the building. Maybe that would be enough protection. That was only 12 miles, 20 kilometers from where they were standing. Was a searing pyroclastic flow heading their way? <clears throat> Flows moved at up to 100 miles, 160 kilometers an hour. Did the scientists have only precious moments before they themselves fell victim to an eruption and raging, searing pyroclastic flows? This time, the scientists knew they had no time to evacuate. They raced for the back of the building, the farthest they could get from the erupting monster. They waited, panting, sweat. Andy could stand it no longer. He went back to the front door. 
All he saw was black, complete black, from the rain, the dark clouds, the ashfall. The sound was terrifying, like a wall of rock a mile high racing down at breakneck speeds. I could die, Andy thought. All my friends could die. He watched and he watched, his eyes glued to a row of lights on an airstrip that pointed toward the volcano. I figured that as long as I could see the lights, the pyroclastic flow hadn't reached us. If the lights went out, I had maybe 20 seconds to run to the back of the building. Maybe that would be enough protection. Then the air and sky seemed to lighten, just a shade. The pyroclastic flow hadn't reached the base. Andy and his friends checked the instruments. Everything was flatlining. All the monitoring stations had been destroyed, except for one, a station on the base. Victim. If you fall victim to something, you suffer or die because of it. The volcanologists quickly grabbed what they could, piled into trucks, and tore off. That is, until they merged with hordes of evacuating Filipinos. It was a huge, slow-moving traffic jam of everybody with a water buffalo strolling out of town, says Andy. We were going crazy with the delay, but at least we were headed away from the volcano. But Andy, the other volcanologists, and the villagers managed to escape with their lives. The eruption of Mount Pinatubo was the second largest eruption <laughs> in the 20th century. A few hundred people died, most in buildings that later collapsed under the weight of rain-soaked ash. But more than 20,000 lives were saved. We got it right, Andy said. We questioned ourselves and doubted ourselves as things unfolded, but we got it right. This ash-covered news box on Clark Air Base tells the story of the headline. 